A single note, played by itself, can have a very pleasant sound, but it has very little meaning without other notes. Much of the note's identity, quality, and significance is found in its relationship not only to itself, but in relation to its higher self, to its place in the scale, and to its relationship with other notes it's in accord with. I'll illustrate this with the help of my guitar. Here's a G. Here's that G raised one octave. Here is that G lowered down one octave. Here is G in harmony with its higher and lower self. Its relationship to both its higher and lower self gives the note a much fuller identity. And of course, every note can be played at a higher or lower octave. In a classic seven-tone scale, any note can be played at any tone. By that, I mean that G can be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, or T, depending on what key we're in. In the key of G, G is the root tone, Do. In the key of F, G is Re. In E flat, it becomes Mi. G can ascend up the seven-tonal ladder by descending down through the seven scales, until it's eventually raised through the octave to its higher self, so to speak. In the standard diatonic scale, there are five whole steps and two half steps. In astrological terms, we can think of this as the five planets visible to the naked eye and the two luminaries, the sun and the moon. In yoga, we might think of the seven chakras. In music, of course, we give the letters G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp to the seven notes in the G scale. If we add all of the half tones in, we have a chromatic scale made up of 12 tones. And of course, depending on what key we're in, any of the seven notes may be in the place of any of the twelve tones, in much the same way that the seven planets may pass through the twelve houses of the zodiac, creating the music of the spheres. And only by completing its journey can each note fully know itself. It takes on a different tone, or occupies a different place in the scale, as it takes different notes as its root. It harmonizes with all of them in a unique way. Each of these relationships brings out a different aspect of itself. To give an example, here is G in the key of C, which is its fourth.
To give another example, here is G in the key of D, which is its fifth. G has a very different feel to it in the key of C than it does in D, doesn't it? And of course it will express a different aspect of itself in each of the seven keys. If we multiply the seven tones by the seven scales, we get 49. Interestingly enough, 49 is the value of the name Pythagoras in Pythagorean numerology. It's also the value of my own full name, 49, or the square of seven, is an interesting number for several reasons. And seven is the value of G in numerology, by the way. Each of the digits in 49, four and nine, are also squares, the squares of two and three. And of course, adding the digits four and nine together gives a sum of 13, which is another highly significant number. The digits of 13, one and three, further reduce to four which of course relates directly to the Pythagorean tetractus. The tetractus contains four rows, the first row made of one point, the second row of two points, the third row of three points, and the fourth row of four points. A single point represents the dimensionless realm. Two points represent a line, or the first dimension. Three points represent a plane, such as a triangle, which exists in the second dimension. Four points represent a solid, such as a tetrahedron, which exists in the third dimension. Of course, when we add one, two, three, and four, we get a sum of ten. And if you draw lines between all of the dots that can be connected, you'll end up with thirty-three lines. If you add the ten points of the tetractus and the thirty-three lines of the tetractus, you get a sum of forty-three, which is the value of the word illuminatus. If we add the two digits of 43, 4, and 3 together to reduce it to a single digit number, as is the custom in numerology, we're left with 7. So if we look at the name Illuminatus Pythagoras through the lens of numerology, we see Illuminatus as 7 and Pythagoras as 49, which is 7 squared. Illuminatus Pythagoras is 7 and 7 times 7, in other words. Another interesting bit of trivia is that the word tetractus reduces to a value of four in numerology, which is very appropriate. The four rows can also be seen as representing the four classical elements. In Kabbalistic terms, this relates to the tetragrammaton, or the name of God represented as yod He va He. The Kabbalistic tree of life can also be seen as an alternative way of drawing the tetractus. The first sphere is the point. The next two spheres form a line, the next three form a triangle, and the next four form a tetrahedron represented two-dimensionally. The ten numbered cards of the four suits in the tarot deck represent each sphere of the tree of life, or the tetractus in each of the four Kabbalistic worlds, represented by the four rows of the tetractus, or the four divisions of the tree of life. It's significant that Noah's flood lasted for forty days and nights. The Hebrews wandered forty years in the desert, and Jesus fasted in the wilderness for forty days. The four elements in the four worlds are represented by the sixteen court cards of the tarot, and the twenty-two paths which connect the ten spheres that make up the tree of life are represented by the twenty-two major arcana cards of the tarot, and also correspond to the twenty-two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, or the Phoenician alphabet from which it was derived. In fact, Virtually every alphabetic writing system in use today is derived from the Phoenician alphabet. Where did you think we got the word phonetic from? It's Phoenician. And numerology is based on the numerical value of letters. I don't promote any kind of superstitious thinking, but numerology is interesting to study. Different numerologists use different systems. The system known as Pythagorean numerology involves writing the numbers 1 through 9 in a row writing the letters A through I in a row beneath that, 
writing the letters J through R in a row beneath that, and then writing the letters S through Z beneath that. The value of any letter will be the number above that column. You can play with this if you want to find out what the number value of your name is. And with a little bit of research, you can look up the meaning and significance of different numbers. Each number has its own unique properties. Certain numbers are related to other numbers in that they share some property in common. For example, all even numbers are related in that they are all divisible by 2. All square numbers are related in that they are all the products of some other number multiplied by itself. All negative numbers are related in that they all fall below zero on the number line. In a sense, no number can be fully understood apart from its various relationships with other numbers. 4 is the sum of 2 plus 2, and 4 is also the product of 2 times 2. The number 2 is very unique in the sense that whether you add it to itself or multiply it by itself, you get 4. But 4 is more than just the sum of 2 and 2, or the product of 2 and 2. It's also the sum of 1 and 3. It's also the sum of 8 and negative 4. The number 4 can be expressed via an infinite number of equations. 4 describes the result of an infinite number of numbers interacting with an infinite number of numbers in an infinite number of ways. To fully understand the number 4, you need all of the numbers, including 0, infinity, negative numbers, and imaginary numbers. And this is true of every other number, too. The whole is needed to fully understand any of the parts. Mysticism, properly understood, isn't about superstition and irrational belief, although the irrational numbers are necessary in order to have a full understanding of the rational numbers. And in the same way, I don't believe we can simply discard the irrational aspects of our psyche. Throughout our lives, and perhaps throughout many lives, we occupy a number of different roles. We enter into many different kinds of relationships with many different kinds of people. And in each of these roles and relationships, a different aspect of our identity is allowed to be discovered and expressed. This is all a part of the journey of self-knowledge. Remember this as you find yourself in contact with negative individuals who behave irrationally or who act according to beliefs and things which are imaginary. They're all required as a part of what we might think of as a complete system of mathematics or music, and all of it is a part of you, just as countless numbers are part of an expression of the number four. Each note has been played before and will be played again a countless number of times as a part of every possible chord and scale. Every song that's ever been written is a part of every note, and every note is a part of every song even if that note is never played in certain songs. I encourage you to do a little research and study music theory and math theory with this sense in mind. For now, just try to get the sense of what I'm trying to convey, and perhaps you can begin to hear the music of the spheres as your third ear opens. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up button, share this on social media, subscribe to my channel, visit my website, and consider making a donation to help support my work. I'll see you next time. Peace.